ese espectáculo. It's about spectacle. It's about goals. It's about acrobatics. And it's a whole series of technical and physical actions at the highest level. It is a very visually attractive, very nice, very pleasant sport to see. It is a sport made for television with three fast periods of 12 minutes each. It's done indeed to be a spectacle. I think the beach soccer has all these ingredients to become a sport of the present and future. It's a spectacular sport. There are many goals that are the pinnacle for soccer. It's what people want to see. There is also a lot of friendship between the players. Therefore, I think it's still a pure sport. I'd say he's the best beach soccer scorer in history. I was lucky enough to start my career with him. We both started out at the same time, on the same day. And after 15 years, we're still playing together. And it's been a real pleasure to have competed alongside him all these years. Amareye is a fantastic person, a family man. I had the opportunity to share moments with him on the same team in Italy. Amareye off the field is a fantastic guy. On the field he is spectacular, always has been. He was the best in the world in 2008 in Marseille, deservedly so. He scored some beautiful volley goals, such as bicycle goals. He has a very prosperous future as a coach or as a manager of this sport. Bruno, as a player, won everything there is to win on a collective level. A technically evolved player and, for me, one of the best pivots in the world. Not only shooting, but also serving his teammates. I was lucky enough to start out by playing beach soccer with my mates, who I'd been playing soccer with all my life in my hometown. We started playing in the summer, in the city beach soccer tournament. And we won it. We then had the good fortune of taking part in the Spanish championship. And once again, we won it. I was lucky enough to be selected for the national squad, so I got more continuity. And that's when the whole process of training, improving, competing, and turning into a professional kicks in. I started in the field. I played in a young team of Estoril Praia. Unfortunately, I had a motorbike accident. I spent two years without being able to practice any sport. I returned through an invitation to participate in an amateur tournament in Carcevelos. And my first response, I confess, was negative. I didn't even know that it was played on soft sand. But at the end of a week, I accepted and started my path into beach soccer. Bon. Before becoming a professional beach soccer player, I was playing professional indoor soccer. I started my athletic career in indoor soccer, and in my 20s I had the opportunity to have my first training on the beach. From there it was a matter of adaptation, a matter of time training to adapt to the floor. Indoor soccer is very similar to the sand soccer given the size of the field the number of players and the predominance of the pieces. So, after I get used to the floor, things got easier. I don't really know. 
It's true that I'm an attacker, and I score a few goals, but I like to believe that I can bring much more to the game at a tactical level, and in terms of skillful play, than just passing the ball or scoring goals. We are the only team who beat them, and we're going to beat them today. I'm a natural born forward. I'm a player who plays in the front. It's often said that I'm possibly one of the sharpest players in the world in front of goal. Probably one of my main virtues is the spirit of helping the team, because I think it's a team sport, and therefore the team comes first, always above the individual. One, two, three. Speaking of one's virtues is not easy, but I think the following. It's important we get to implement the dynamic of indoor soccer on the sand. I think that's my main feature. I can make a striker, that is my position, a pivot, that is distributing the ball to my teammates and finishes the play as well. I learned to play back, I learned to play front, from time to time side plays as well. Who knows, maybe even a goal. It's like going back a few years and becoming a child again. The nervousness comes over me. It's a responsibility. The pinnacle of the career of any player is wearing a shirt of the national team, knowing that we're representing an entire country. Hence all my nervousness. When I wear it, it is with great pride. Even in my first game, when I heard the national anthem start, tears dropped down my face, because men also cry. When you are a child, everything is new. I wore the shirt of the Brazilian team for the first time at 22. It was a great novelty. I was very happy for that moment. However, since then, I knew the size of the responsibility I was taking. You have the weight on your back for a nation like Brazil, which is the soccer country. There are 200 million people, 200 million coaches, you know. So it's a big responsibility, and I always assume this responsibility by training, struggling, and trying to always be better, to be able to defend well the colors of the Brazilian team. It's a matter of pride, a responsibility, a whole accumulation of indescribable experiences and feelings, to put it briefly. Every youngster in the world dreams of wearing his country's strip. It's a really fantastic feeling, and I hope that many other young people in the world get to enjoy it. Actually, it was not the most beautiful goal, but it was the most important goal. After the 2005 World Cup, where we lost the semi-final to Portugal, there was a change in the Brazilian team. A new generation could, then in 2006, play the World Cup. Then the first game against Poland was very bad. I was booed at Copacabana. It was a very difficult time. But the comeback took place in the second game. And then I will talk about most important goal, which was a goal that I scored against Japan. Pierre, our goalkeeper, gave me a ball from behind. I hit it twice in the thigh and kicked. The ball was at a perfect angle. It was a very important goal. So important that soon after, I managed to score another two goals. In the first part, it was 3-0. They were my three goals, and at the World Cup, I really had a comeback. I managed to be the third striker of that cup, and also the third best player in the world. So that goal was very important. That goal was crucial for me to be here today, and that I had a comeback. There will always be some goals that are better than others, but the ones that really matter are those that bring the most to the people you're playing with, the team or the national squad. Some goals are better than others, as I said, either because they're more spectacular or because they're more important in terms of the final result. I can't choose one specific goal, though I know there have been some that look really spectacular on TV, some I scored in Japan or some bicycle goals from a difficult position. But I think all of them are important in their own way.
Não faço a mínima ideia. I have no idea. We were followed up by the Federation until a few years ago. Then it was stopped, and I don't have a clue. It will be a healthy competition, Madja, Amareye and me. Each one will say who has more than the other, but there is no way to tell. I and the Brazilian team, according to the accounts of the Brazilian Federation, have 208 goals. With the national squad, probably around 300, I'm not sure. I've occasionally totted them up when I was younger, but the truth is that there are more important objectives than scoring goals now. I feel like I'm at the maturity stage. I'm a less irreverent player than I was years ago. We evolve over time, and I'm a more involved player with the group. We got to the beach soccer level we players wanted to show, to prove. Now, not anymore. The intention is... what you want to do. So it's always very difficult for a sports person to assimilate. Defeats are never pleasant, especially the ones that prevent you from winning titles, which is what we're all after. So yes, we did lose once, back in 2008 against Italy, the World Cup. But that's the name of the game. This is a sport, and not everyone can win, so you just have to accept it. I try to understand the game, read the game well. I try to also play other roles within the field that are not only mine. I am attacking, but also I am trying to defend. It's a difficult time, because a whole series of injuries and physical aches and pains are making themselves felt, which make it hard to perform the sport as I used to, and in the way that I really enjoy. But you go through phases, and you have to accept them as such, and know how to enjoy the good times, and how to deal with and overcome the bad times. Today I'm 32, time has passed. Now are the stages of maturity, professional growth, personal growth too. I think it's impossible to separate our personal life from our sports, our professional life. Kiki Setien and Manu Sarabia always used to tell me that you should try to improve every day in everything you do and do it with the greatest possible enthusiasm. That's what I've tried to do, with the utmost humility, all my life, and I hope to continue that way. There are countless people who have passed through my life in beach soccer and from whom I learned a lot. Let me give an example. Benjamin. Benjamin is a great guy who has taught me a lot regarding responsibility to defend the Brazilian national team and how to be a family man, how to also think about his own family. People who travel the world and have many things to do always come back home. We always bring with us all these memories and these characteristics are essential for a guy seeking to grow in life, not only in sport, but also in life. My two biggest supporters have always been Roberto Valerio and Nico. 
Apart from being friends and colleagues, they are the people who have helped me most throughout my career. I learned a lot from all the coaches. Therefore, I choose all people who are involved in beach soccer in Portugal, as well as the teams and the coaches. The truth is that we've been very fortunate to grow so much in such a short time and to be able to reach so many countries around the world, lots of federations and lots of clubs. And of course, this is a matter of great pride for us. We hope to continue this progress in the coming years and eventually become a mass audience sport on a much greater scale than we are now. Definitely, the sport aspect should be involved in that, that people can practice beach soccer and to evolve in this sport, that there will be more competitions to be held in a healthy way, that there will be more competition among athletes. We're still a small context. The main players are known. Actually, all athletes know each other, which makes the beach soccer a very pleasant sport to practice. I think the growth in this genre is because of that, the practice of other countries by the practice of feminine football. We expect it. We, the athletes, expect that. Where there are more championships, the better it is for the sport, the better it is for us, for future generations. We expect really this growth in the sport. Well, after all these years and so many wonderful places we visited, I think we would say that Dubai is a really idyllic destination and beach venue, followed by Miami, and then of course Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro has got to figure among the top three venues. Vittorio do Espirito Santo, where I live. I'm dying to go back home. I like Rio de Janeiro. The Copacabana beach is the birthplace of the sport, and it really is fantastic to play there. Dubai was really cool. It was very nice to see Dubai. It was really cool to win the World Cup in Dubai in 2009. And another place, suddenly Tahiti in 2013, right? Portugal has wonderful beaches, and, of course, Portimao is one of the best. It is one of the beaches of choice. I think I would also choose Rio as my second choice and Dubai as my third choice because I think it also has beautiful beaches and places and people welcome beach football with open arms. I think that is also important.